Excel dashboards, they can certainly look cool, but how on earth do you get started with them? Welcome to Excel dashboards for beginners. In the first video in the series, we'll talk about cool features of Excel dashboards that you can start using in your work today. Now, good Excel dashboards always have good layouts. They make good use of space. And in order to have a good layout, we're gonna to have to design. We're gonna design our dashboard. Yes, for once in Excel, you're not gonna be doing formulae or code or data analysis. We're gonna take some shapes and move them around and come up with a good design for our dashboard. Now, I recommend this as a kind of default layout. I call this my three by two layout. And over the years, I've found it just seems to work really well for displaying information in a way that the customer can understand. So we're gonna take our rectangular shape, that laptop shape, and divide it up into six squares. And this is gonna be our kind of background grid, if you like, that we're working with. But you can take one of those squares, as I've done on the dashboard, as you can see, take one of those squares, make it into a rectangle, and that can, that can also work well. It depends on your specific situation. So each of these squares or rectangles is gonna contain either a table or a chart. So a nice, simple way to set things up. So you might be saying, but what tables and what charts? Well, there you've got to think about prioritizing information. What does the user want to see most? And often that's a kind of profit and loss figure uh, for the whole scenario. So we've got to think about priority and then where should the most important information go? Well, the Western user, so if you're in the US or Europe or here in the UK, the Western user is going to start in the top left hand corner and work down towards the bottom right hand corner. So our most important piece of information, say that profit and loss figure, don't hide it away. Put it there in the top left hand corner and ideally in a larger font size. Differentiation in font size is important in dashboards as we're going to see later. So the most important information in the top left, also up there, any controls um, that the user uses to control what's displaying on the dashboard, the most important stuff there, and then working down towards the bottom right. This is how the Western user is going to look across your spreadsheet from the top left to the bottom right. So this is the way I recommend you think about layout, prioritizing information, and how the user is going to look down and across your spreadsheet. Good Excel dashboards are easy to understand. What makes them easy to understand? Well, if they're neat and tidy, they can be easy to understand. And let's look at our example dashboard here. I want us to look in particular at the row heights and the column widths, the row heights and the column widths. And what you'll notice just looking at the column widths, for example, they seem to be consistent. And I'm gonna move across to the width height sheet now. And we can see with column widths, I've only used one of two possible column widths. And this makes everything look consistent and neat and tidy. I've got column width two here. I use that column width as kind of a buffer or a spacer column uh, at the end or the beginning of the data display. And then we've got column width eight as well. And I'm using those in the columns that are actually displaying the numbers. And I've applied a similar thing to the row heights as well. So by just using one or two column widths and row heights, doing that consistently, we're gonna create that neat and tidy feel that's gonna get us a good looking dashboard. Now layering is so important in information display. And just take a quick look at our dashboard. What layers can you see? Well, maybe if we look at this view, moving out over to the layering sheet, things become a little bit clearer. So on this uh, sheet, I've just deleted the data and I'm saying we've got three layers here and the layers are helping the user to interpret the information. So we've got a kind of bottom layer uh, over on the right hand side here. And you'll notice I've got a shape here with a gradient fill that is just giving that shading and just making the main pane stand out. So we've got that layer on the bottom with nothing on. Then layer two, this is our main layer. This is containing, this contains the bulk of the information. Again, it stands out more because it's got that layer behind it. And then the third layer, this is our most important information, the key messages. 
that we want the user to see. So we can see on our chart here, we've got some shading, some shadow, just making the chart stand out a little more. The same on the other charts. And then even on this pie chart, we could say there's a fourth layer here, because you can see we've got some shading around the segments on the pie chart, making that information stand out even more. So layering is another tool at our disposal for making the information, the important information, stand out to the user. Color always seems to be such a difficult topic. I'm sure you've seen loads of Excel files with way too much color in. And to some extent, it is a matter of opinion, but I suggest there's two or three things we can bear in mind, kind of universal rules that are really gonna help. And the golden rule for me, the one thing you have gotta take out of this video is use color sparingly. Just use a few colors, that's gonna make them have the maximum impact. So again, we've got a simplified version of the dashboard and we've got three or four colors doing the bulk of the work here. We've got three shades of blue and this beige color. Now, these colors are consistent across the features of the dashboard in the chart, in the table. These colors correspond to the key items of data. So the color is supporting the user assimilation of the data and it's consistent across the dashboard. So those colors are doing the bulk of the work, just two or three colors, some of those closely related colors, I've used shades of blue. And then we've got two contrast colors. One of these contrast colors I suggest should always be yellow. Now, why is yellow good? Because yellow really makes things stand out and it draws user attention there. So we're using these yellow cells to show the user how to control the dashboard, how to manipulate the data, how to make different data display. Just imagine if we had yellow cells everywhere on this spreadsheet, these yellow cells wouldn't stand out and the user wouldn't know where to go to change the data display. So that's one contrast color, the yellow. The other contrast color, we've got the dark red here. So this contrast color just makes the header stand out. And with this contrast color, I'd recommend matching it to a color scheme if you have one, a company logo, you can go online, use an online color picker to get the RGB code and match it to that color. So we've got two contrast colors there used very, very sparingly, two or three colors during the bulk of the work, but the golden rule really is color has to support user simulation and use it sparingly.